Hello friends, I am Arpit and I am here with today's analysis. Today is 4th of December and we are going to cover one very important topic which is in news. That one topic is that our Prime Minister was there at the COP28 which is happening or currently going on in UAE. Now, our Prime Minister travelling anywhere for any bilateral meeting or in a multilateral forum, it becomes important for us aspirants. It becomes important to understand and to listen to and take note of the highlights of the speech of the Prime Minister, which the it is which is being delivered over there. On the, in, in, in these kind of speeches, we get to know the current, I would say, developments, the mindset the government of India is thinking, and and various other insights into you know current aspects of all the things happening. So in today's topic. I have I am covering purposely only one topic today that is very very important. Our Prime Minister, what he said in COP twenty eight, that has to be you know covered, and that that has to be known to you, aspirants. This is very very important. So let's get started with this topic. Now, when the Prime Minister was there at COP twenty eight, that is Conference of Parties twenty eight of United Nations Framework for Combating Climate Change. This UNFCCC has gained, I would say, uh, a lot of weight in the last few years. It has become important, very important. And you know, uh, it it is has it has been uh, signifying an annual event, which is for I would say a very big global challenge which we are facing nowadays. There is global warming. Prime Minister of India, the Italian Prime Minister was also there. Apart from it, you know, world leaders, many prominent world leaders were attending this summit. And, you know, our Prime Minister kept the concerns of the developing and underdeveloped countries in his speech. He also talked about climate finance, which is not being able to mobilize properly. And he also talked about India's contribution. Despite being a developing country, India's contribution in in you know mitigating or tackling climate change apart from it he also proposed that the cop 33 that is to be there in 2028 should be held in india and you know uh, i think up to uh, cop 31 or 32 it has been finalized where they are going to be but yes cop 33 we have a window and he proposed that it should be in india is it going to be the first time any COP is going to be there in India? No. And it's not going to be the first time when any COP is going to be there in India. There has been a COP in 2002, that is COP 8 in India. So this is going to be the second COP if it, it gets approved by the members of UNFCCC. So let's get into the details what our Prime Minister talked about in the UNFCCC. COP 28. He urged the countries to rise above self-interest. Self-interest, basically many countries, especially the developed countries, they are thinking about, you know, more and more development. And for development, emissions do happen. On the other hand, they should be thinking about reducing emissions. They should be thinking about helping other countries to develop. But that's not you know, what they are thinking. Their self-interest is above all this. So he urged the countries to rise above self-interest without naming any country. Deliver on all their climate obligations. Climate obligations for the developed countries, $100 billion per year. Loss and damage fund. Then we have INDCs adopted by every country, whether developed or developing, so INDCs by the developed countries so definitely should be fulfilled. So, it is these are, these are kind of obligations on the countries with respect to climate change. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also said that developing countries must get appropriate access to remaining global carbon budget. Now, what is global carbon budget? We need to understand this. Now, this global carbon budget has been linked to 
the 1.5 degree Celsius target. This 1.5 degree Celsius target we adopted in COP21. COP21 in 2015 it happened. Paris Pact. We've discussed about this 1.5 degree Celsius target multiple times. I reiterated that by 2100, that is the end of this century, the global average temperatures should be X plus 1.5 degree Celsius. Means global warming should only happen by 1.5 degree Celsius from the pre-industrial. This X degree Celsius is the average temperature of pre-industrial era. This pre-industrial era, 1850 to 1900 these 50 years. The average temperature of these 50 years is X. So, beyond this average temperature X, 1.5 degree Celsius should increase. This much global warming should happen. If this much happens, then, you know, things will be fine. But it, it, it will be disastrous, but it will be under limits. Now, coming back to this global carbon budget. Global carbon budget, what it is, it is basically the emissions allowed. Means there are there is a budget that you can emit this much. If you emit this much, then 1.5 degree Celsius will reach. And if you emit beyond this budget, obviously we will surpass 1.5 degree Celsius. So in this global carbon budget, in the remaining global carbon budget that is from now till 2100, developing countries must get appropriate access because they have to develop. Earlier, they were not allowed to develop. The developing countries of that time, which are now developed, have done the emissions. They have caused global warming. And now we are being asked to, you know, restrict ourselves. So that is what the Prime Minister of India is saying. That in the remaining global carbon budget, global carbon budget is basically the budget of emissions. That emissions or that extent of emissions, which will help us remain under 1.5 degree Celsius. So in that emissions, the share from developing countries should be appropriate. Means they should be allowed to emit, they should be allowed to develop. Speaking at the high level segment of COP28 meeting in Dubai, he also proposed 2028 climate change conference, that is COP33, to happen in India. So this is not the first time this COP is going to happen in India. The history of COP in India, if I have to talk about no, COP8 in 2002 happened in India once only. But at that time, COP was, COP of UNF, UNFCCC was not a big ticket event. Big ticket event means it was not so popular. It was just like, huh, we care. it has to happen. So it is happening. The world leaders as such did not participate. Largely officials and all participated. But now, since the world leaders are participating, it has become a big ticket event and India wants to host this. Like India hosted G20 this year. At that time, the scale of this conference used to be much smaller, unlike the most of high-profile annual events that it has evolved into now. Attracting attendance of over 100 heads of states and governments, etc. More than 100 heads of state and government have you know, reached Dubai for this. India was among the very few large economies which were on track to fulfill their climate commitments. Climate commitments, INDCs, intended nationally determined contributions. 2015, we had three INDCs. 2021, we had five INDCs. So, these INDCs we've covered earlier. So, we are on track to fulfill our climate commitments. Now, we need to look into some global climate initiatives by India also. In the past few years, the first is International Solar Alliance. I would say 2015, it got conceptualized. We've covered this in and around G20 when you know the head of International Solar Alliance was invited. This International Solar Alliance is basically a grouping of sunshine countries. What are these sunshine countries? This is the equator. This is Tropic of Cancer. This is roughly Tropic of Capricorn. So countries lying fully or partially between the tropics are called as sunshine countries. These countries have high solar energy potential. 
means solar energy can be you know produced in these countries and this international solar alliance is an alliance for that basically countries collaborate with each other and they share technical expertise funds also transfer from one country to the other country so that you know we can adopt more and more solar energy it is headquartered in gurugram in india then next is coalition for disaster resilient infrastructure cdri cdri 2021 it was uh, adopted it is what it is a knowledge hub or an expert hub where you know expertise or i would say knowledge is shared with respect to uh, you know best practices adopted for making infrastructure disaster resilient it is not for funding infrastructure it is for you know sharing the experience sharing the knowledge you know it is a kind of a repository to make infrastructure disaster resilient that has to be understood then lifestyle for environment campaign life this campaign is is again basically proposed in 2021 okay by india it is kind of an organic lifestyle which has to be adopted for you know conserving the environment you know going out of the rooms switch off the fans switch off the 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 lights use public transport more and more you know collect waste in a proper manner wet waste separate dry waste separate go for more and more recycling refurbishing all these kind of small small habits if we adopt if they are going to have a drastic change on the environment a positive impact on the environment that is life cap then decisions like renewable energy tripling and global biofuels alliance taken by the g20 summit under india's presidency has has again gained some i would say notices all across the world so these are various initiatives which have been taken by india being a developing country for conserving the environment now the prime minister's speech at cop the world does not have much time he says to correct the mistakes of the previous century that is the 19th century 20th century the world also will have to be ambitious in climate actions just like india is but when india submitted its indcs in 2015 seeing our indcs many countries the developed countries especially said that these indcs are way too ambitious india you are a developing country you will not be able to meet these indcs we had to reduce the carbon intensity by 33 to 35% we had to reduce or we had to create a carbon sink of additional i would say 1.5 to 2 gigatons equivalent carbon dioxide equivalent all these things they, they were very ambitious for a developing country like india but yes india achieved it india not only achieved it india submitted its next set of indcs in 2021 five now with enhanced targets then the world again said india you are being too ambitious actually we are leading by example over here we will have to be ambitious not only we but all the countries in the world will have to be ambitious ha huh? theek hai there is some you know capacity constraints uh you know under developed countries will not be able to do that much but the developed countries they will be able to do that much and they should be doing countries need to rise above their narrow self interest fulfill their climate obligations energy transition that is from non renewable energy sources or fossil based sources to non fossil this is called as energy transition it has to be just inclusive equitable and innovative means it should not hamper the ones who are there in fossil based sector they should be you know their livelihood not should, should not be hampered the government's income should not be hampered because all across the world many governments are taxing these fossil products and they form a major chunk of their revenue that has to be you know just that has to be inclusive the world must develop innovative technology and developed countries must agree to transfer the technology to others as well it should not be restricted neither it should be like you know you have uh, you you restrict these kind of uh, things ki bhai we cannot transfer technology to other countries and like things like this they have to be transferred and without taking any charges because developed countries you are morally responsible for this 
Now, India's Green Credits Initiative, it is basically a pro-planet, proactive and positive initiative. It's something that the entire world should adopt. It is nothing but, you know, uh, though we, we, the government of India is compensating those entities which are conserving the environment and punishing those entities which are not. So, kind of a carbon market has been established. I will be covering this carbon market uh, in, in a video in the times to come, in a day or two. Okay. That is Green Credits Initiative, which has been taken and it should be adopted by every country. It is an alternative market-based mechanism that prioritizes public participation in environment positive projects. So, we are also targeting public participation under this Green Credits Initiative. Now, he highlighted the concerns of developing countries. Developing countries, basically Global South, we have referred to multiple times. These are developing countries of Asia, Africa, and South America. We have done this Voice of Global South Summit also two times now. You know, I've covered the second one, which happened last, lately. And we have discussed this climate change over there. Because it is these developing countries and underdeveloped countries which are facing the maximum brunt of climate change and they have contributed nothing in causing that climate change. That climate change is due to the developed countries. But they are facing the brunt of it. So we need help from the developed countries. We need help in terms of technology transfer. We need help in terms of climate finance. We need help in terms of loss and damage funds. All these aspects we need help. And, you know, the developed countries are morally obligated to help us on this. The countries of the global south have contributed very little in causing climate change, yet the adverse impact of climate change affects them the most. Despite lack of adequate resources, these countries have committed themselves to take climate action. But to fulfill their obligations, the global south needs climate finance and technology. So we need finance. We need technology also. And who has the finance? Developed countries. Who has the technologies? The developed countries. So that should be shared with us. This is what we advocate for. This is natural and justifiable too for the global south to expect that developed countries help them in the fight against climate change. And obviously, it is quite natural for us to expect these kind of things. On climate finance and climate budget, what does he say? G20 meeting. We had agreed that 2030 climate action requires trillions of dollars in climate finance. But now, only $100 billion per year are coming and that too are not coming. The climate finance has not only to be made available, but it must also be accessible and affordable. So, this should be there to the countries of Global South. The Indian PM welcomed the operationalization of loss and damage fund on the opening day of COP28, which we covered yesterday. The loss and damage fund was officially you know, launched $475 million with contributions from UAE, European Union, USA, and Japan. Now, there is some hope as well, which the Prime Minister expressed in his speech. COP28 would show real progress on the new collective quantified goal, NCQG, which we discussed in prior previous videos. This is a new target which will replace the $100 billion. How much it will be? Not discussed. But not not declared, but it is under discussion. And in COP28, on this new collective quantified goal, which is which has to be adopted by 2024 or prior to 2025, it has to be adopted, will be there. So all these will be discussed. And you know, this is some hope which we have as, as developing countries. The Green Climate Fund and Adaptation Fund must not be starved of money, and they should be replenished immediately once they are utilized or exhausted. The multilateral development banks like World Bank should assure that they would provide affordable finance, not just for development projects, but also for climate action. And here, multilateral development banks like the World Bank and all are accused by the developing countries that they are biased and they are biased in favor of the developed world. The developed countries would diminish their carbon footprint by 2050 means they should bring their carbon footprint down by 2050 means they should be net zero they should be targeting net zero means whatever they are emitting that much they should be you know sucking in india has kept itself target of net zero by 2070 we want to become 
let's see look this is one of our indcs which we adopted in 2021 one of the five indcs which we adopted that we have to become net zero by 2070 the indian pm also stressed that developing countries must get to utilize an appropriate share in the fast depleting carbon budget depleting carbon budget carbon budget i've already explained in the starting slide it is the amount of greenhouse gas emissions that science says can be allowed without breaching the 1.5 degree celsius temperature target so that is carbon budget and we should be allowed a fair share in that so these were all the things which were discussed by our prime minister in the cop20 all very important concepts most of these have been clarified to you prior but yes you should keep these things in mind you might see some of the things being repeated but yes things are interconnected so they are getting repeated so this is it from today's session i will be meeting you tomorrow now with more such informative news pieces till then you guys keep studying keep reading keep writing and most importantly keep reading namaste jai